What is up, my ninja Shinobi here, with another Diablo 3 Reaper Souls video for you guys. And today we're going to be talking a little bit more about the Witch Doctor. Uh, in a previous video, I told you guys that this week I'd be putting some Witch Doctor type guides out. Um, this will be the final guide of the week for Witch Doctor. We'll be talking about Carnival today, and I'll also be showing you a little bit of where the character has come and the amount of time that I've put into the character. Now, on purpose, what I'm doing this season is you guys know that I'm playing a one class every week but what I'm also doing is I'm playing it like an average player would play it so that way you guys can get a good um, idea on how how long it will take you to get certain gear how long it will take you to be able to get the builds and the specs that you want to do and everything like that so it's all in testing and all in fun and then at the end of the six weeks then I'll push my characters and actually you know, compete in the Greater Rift leaderboards at the end. So half the season will be like casual mode, and the other half of the season will be, um, you know, pushing it harder. And this character here that you're seeing on the screen in the background uh, is the Carnival Witch Doctor. It only has about 50 hours play time, so that's one whole week, seven days, you know, and I, you know, that's that's 50 hours. It's not an insane amount. Um, you know, it could definitely be higher, it could definitely be lower. I mean, my character is only Paragon 300. Um, now, moving on to the next character that I'll be showing you guys, which will be coming up in the very next video, is the Wizard. You guys voted for the Wizard, and there was a lot of comments in the previous video about that, so we'll, uh, I'll be showing you the Wizard in the very next video. But with the Carnival Witch Doctor, man, like, the Carnival Witch Doctor is so fun. And when you, I mean, you may say to yourself, like, hmm, what's the best spec for... Witch Doctors, you know, what's the go-to spec for Witch Doctors? What's going to be the spec that they do to be able to do the solo leaderboards to get the highest possible uh, thing that they can get? And the answer for that is the Carnival Witch Doctor. If you've never played the Carnival Witch Doctor before and then you play it for the first time compared to the other ones, you're like, this is so much easier. I can actually pinpoint what targets I want to attack, which you can't do that with every other fetish build. Um, you know, and you can actually do pierce damage, so you're actually doing AoE damage, kind of, where, you know, you can actually do a sustainable amount of damage. Instead of your fetish is just sitting there and just pecking away at whatever they feel like, you have a lot more control and you have a lot more damage output that you can do. Uh, with that said, though, um, because you are using the Carnival Helm, and I'll show you my character in just a minute here, uh, you do lose things like Mascagerum and... That's unfortunate. I mean, you do get that damage loss, but I feel like the pierce that you get from Dagger, Darts, and from Carnival is so strong in comparison uh, to Mascagerum. Mascagerum is great. Maybe you have like an SMK and you want to go maybe that kind of route for a little while, go physical or fire or something like that. Um, but the cream of the crop is the Carnival build. It is what you're going for. And, uh, yeah, I mean, like, I barely put any time into this character as far as doing Greater Rifts, and I completed uh, Greater Rift 43 so far. And I'm already moved on to another class, so I'll come back to the Witch Doctor probably later on. But, you know, I mean... Just imagine the potential with the character if I actually put a lot of time into it, and you guys as well. So let's go ahead and switch over and get into the spec and the build that I'm doing here and give you a little bit of insight on why I chose what I did. And here we go. All right, and here we are in town, and I'm going to show you some of the items here, some of the choices and everything like that, um, and all that. Um, so first, obviously, I'm using Enchantress. You might think that's kind of weird. Well, I haven't found the, you know, I've geared up so quickly that I haven't even found the Templar uh, Relic, the immunity one. So I'm just using her for right now, and I'm not even using double unity combo. Uh, I've only found one unity so far, uh, which is actually, this is the longest it's ever taken me to get double unity combo. But uh, now double unit combo is an option you could do in the future. Um, we'll get more into that though. Uh, but yeah, this is just uh, the follower here. Nothing special. Uh, just going mainly with just getting like the S of Johan and pull things in for you to help you with stacking monsters on top of each other so you can do some pierce damage. Uh, let's talk a little bit about the pierce damage though. So, uh, so we are using dagger darts and carnival. Now dagger darts, this one isn't ancient, but I did get a gift and I could roll it up higher and uh, t around 24. 50 damage around there is pretty decent uh, for this and uh, yeah the only thing would be a little bit better if the vitality wasn't on there and I had like attack speed or something because you don't care as much about vitality and I probably yeah I have a crap ton of health uh, right now um, but yeah 
So then, you know, dagger darts, what does it do? So if you've never seen the Carnivalbeal before, your poison darts and your fetish's poison darts now pierce. Um, now, can you get away with using dagger darts without the Carnival? You kind of can, but it's really bad, uh, and vice versa with the Carnival as well. So the Carnival here, um, your fetishes shoot a poison dart every time that you do. Um, so... Yeah, I mean, you can get away with using Carnival by itself a little bit, but you're not going to get that pierce, and that's what it's all about. You know, that's why you use a dagger or darts. Um, yeah, so this one is not too bad. You know, rolled pretty well. I mean, obviously, if it was ancient, it would be better, but... Yep, not too shabby right here uh, for the Carnival. Now, I do want to talk a little bit about the Carnival because recently Blizzard made some changes to the fetishes, the fetish psychophants to be more specific. And it says that when you summon a fetish psychophant, it will, it will pretty much snapshot or take whatever your highest elemental is at the time, and your fetish will do that kind of damage. Now, if you do use your dart to shoot, regardless of what elemental this dart is if you pick the physical one doesn't matter which one you picked by default what happens is your fetishes do the t the default poison dart which is a poison dart right obviously with the name poison the default one is just poison dart um, so your fetishes will shoot poison damage if you're going for this right here so if you see they are shooting poison damage doesn't matter if your elemental is Physical, it doesn't matter if it's anything, which I think does contradict exactly why they made those changes. So I hope that Blizzard maybe changes this so we can get, so we don't have to only use poison and we can kind of like do whatever elemental we want, just like every other fetish spec can do. Um, so that would be nice if we could do that. But for right now, you're pretty much stuck into poison. So, you know, get your poison on your, uh, on your aug guilds here and using the two piece aug guilds, but getting the three piece because of Rina Royal Grandeur, uh, using just a very basic. Uh, amulet right now. I did get a slightly better one right here. I could re-roll the uh, cooldown off or the int off and get a socket and yeah, I lose a tiny bit of damage, but I'm going to pick up um, a, you know, obviously the prevent poison damage, which is nice to have. Uh, not necessarily needed, but nice to have. The go-to amulet for the um, the Carnival build, uh, or just Witch Doctors in general, is most likely going to be the Hellfire Amulet. So you're going to spend some time farming for that. I didn't do that this time because I would have spent my entire week playing on the Witch Doctor trying to farm for it. So, so you know, I want to farm for more crucial items, and I did that. Uh, but when I return to the Witch Doctor, then maybe that's something I would do. Uh, obviously, using the six-piece Zuni Moss here, if you guys haven't seen it before, it is pretty freaking awesome. And uh, you do get some survivability there, uh, and you get some really nice burst damage increase. Now, I am not using double Unity combo, as I talked about before, um, because I only have one, one Unity so far. If I found another Unity, I might switch out the Convention of Elements here. I most likely would, to give me a lot more survivability. Um, but, I mean, honestly, you don't really need a lot of survivability. I mean, yeah, you're going to be squishy. It's just how it's going to be. Um, you know, if you get hit by Jailer, yes, you're going to die. Like, that's how it's going to be. But you can get, you know, the Arcane Immunity Amulet if you wanted to. That could help you out with that. Uh, but that's a very specific situation you're trying to avoid. And Double Unity Combo may be the way to go later on. Uh, but Convention of Elements is okay. I want to explain a little bit about Convention of Elements here because some people have been very confused about this and I have done my own testing with it and I have figured out exactly how it works and interacts with the Fetish Psychophants. Um, so, as I said before, your Fetish Psychophants, when you summon them, they get whatever your highest elemental is. And you see how this rotates through the elements, right? Then you would think, oh, well, they would just you know rotate through and pretty much all my Fetishes would get a huge damage increase, right? Not exactly. So, how it works is... Um, this is giving you damage to element and not elemental damage. As you take a look right here, you would see my element damage going up higher, but it's not. Um, the damage to element is. So it's a, it's a difference there. Um, and so pretty much because I am on poison as my highest one, uh, especially when I also have my carnival here and I'm shooting my poison darts, when this rolls up the poison like it is right now, I will get 178% increased damage uh, to that element. So that's definitely nice. Um, yes, you'd want to have poison on your amulet. You'd want to have poison on your... Um, 
on here to you know make that a little bit stronger. Is this something you use in the end game? Most likely not. In the way that I see it, 178 percent divided by four, you know, because you're not going to be able to get the effect of it all the time, just only when it rolls around the poison. Uh, it's kind of like a mini mascajerum right here. It's like a, it's not as good as like a mascajerum, uh, and it's just kind of like a little mini effect for it. But it is some added damage, so it is helpful. Um, but yeah, and then just going through some of the other items here is just more. Zuni Moss stuff. Um, picking up this as soon as possible is very uh, important. Um, I would say, because people ask me all the time, what is the order for blood shard spending on the witch doctor this is the order that i did and i think it's really good uh helmet right off the bat you can get zunimas helm mascajerum tiki helm and carnival those are four really strong options um, for right off the bat and a Zuni Moss Helm, it would be good because, uh, you know, it helps you get your six piece quicker so you can farm those other items more efficiently and faster. Um, but yeah, uh, the second piece that I would say to go for would most likely be uh, your offhand uh, because it just you get a huge damage bonus for your fetish army um, and also your gloves because you can get Tasker and Theo, you can get Mage Fist gloves, which is a good starter thing, and you can also get... Uh, the Zuni ones as well. And then chest piece probably after that because you can get cinder coat, you can get this, and uh, yeah. Uh, and then after that, it pretty much doesn't matter too much. You can tell that I still need a good belt on here. If I spend more time on this character in the future, then uh, belt will be a priority to try and get that witching hour. Um, do you need belt of transcendence for the carnival build? It's a question I get a lot. No, you don't. Um, you, you're completely fine with summoning your fetishes up pretty quickly as you saw in the video footage in the beginning uh, but that's pretty much it for the character let me go ahead and run through the spec a little bit here um so I'm using Poison Dart Snake to the face. I like it because you get that little stun effect in there. It can be very helpful in the higher tiers. Um, and uh, some people have asked me before, if you use something like Splinters and you shoot three Poison Darts, do, do you, does your fetishes shoot three as well? Uh, not exactly. Uh, it's Like I said, it goes off your basic Poison Dart, so you can choose whatever one you want to. But uh, yeah, I like Snake to the face. Um, it's just really strong. And uh, yeah. Uh, and then we also have Haunt with Poison Spirit, uh, getting that 20% damage bonus. It really helps you when you don't have Piranha NATO. Um, you know, because some people ask me, why do you use Haunt? Why don't you use Jinx instead? You'll get a bigger damage bonus in a bigger area. But the thing is, this is a mana spender. So, you know, on a on a Rift Guardian, you're not going to be able to spam Piranha NATO all the time on him. So if you want to get the full effect of your six-piece bonus, make sure you use Haunt. So that way you're always, always getting that huge damage bonus instead of of, you know from your six piece bonus when you use a menace bender so uh, that's why I feel like it's a necessity you just have to have it and yeah but Prado Nato is good for the AOE for that there uh, spirit walk with John just for the bigger uh, increased time now you're going to feed uh, fetish army legion of daggers now one good thing out of the carnival helm being um, a different uh, making it go to poison is the fact that the fetish army you can go with anyone you want here because it's going to convert it to poison no matter what so the best one is legion of daggers you get three extra guys so you get eight total um, that is the best one to go for plain and simple because you don't get the effect of the fire tiki tortures because you're doing the poison right so the best one to go with is the legion of daggers uh, for now, anyways, if, if they were to make some changes. Big Bad Voodoo, Slam Dance, uh, we have Grave Injustice, Pierce the Veil, Fetish Psycho Fans, and Jungle Fortitude. Just for some added reduction, um, I don't, this, my gear right now is not fully optimized, um, so obviously I'm going to need a little bit more protection, a little bit more survivability, but there are other options like Spirit Vessel, uh, Gru Gruesome Feast, and uh, things like that. Um, yeah, so that's pretty much it there. People have also asked me before, do you feel like the small man's finger, the one where it takes all the gargant gargantuan and splits up into three guys, uh, makes them stronger? Do you think that's a, vi a viable item? Uh, for like a beginner to mid mid character, yeah, it is okay. Same thing goes with the Belt of Transcendence um, and a lot of these new items. They're mainly just going to help out a starter to mid-range character. This character is starting to get to the high end, so no need for that stuff. Um, 
But yeah, and then also I want to show you guys uh, here, I am uh, leveling up, I have my Simplicity Strength, so you get increased the damage of your primary skills by 37.5%, that actually does work with the Carnival, so it's just a straight up huge damage bonus, and then you get some healing out of that, obviously Enforcer is what you want to go for as well, uh, which needs to be leveled up, and I didn't have time to level this one up, but Gogok Swiftus is great, getting that attack speed, getting those darts out more often is what you're looking for, and you also get some cooldown reduction there to help out a little bit more for spamming them cooldowns but that's about it guys hope you guys found some kind of useful information out of this enjoy the witch doctor i'm looking forward to coming back to it i love it it is so fun and uh i barely i just got the tip of the iceberg and i'm already you know doing tier 43 plus if you put some serious time into this class i feel like you can easily push tier 50 plus and that'll be it for today guys and i'll see you guys in the very next video where i cover the wizard until then my name is Shinobi, and thanks for watching.